Hi everyone, this is a tutorial from dwiconcepts.com. In this tutorial today, we will learn how to implement a slowly changing dimension of type 1 using data services specific transform like a table comparison transform. Apart from that, we will consider the extraction of the source data on an incremental basis. That is, we are going to do a change data extraction from the source. Let's go direct into the job implementation where we will see how we configure a very simplistic batch load control table to extract the change data from the source table. In this particular example, we will also consider our previous product dimension table as SCD type 1. This is how our data services job look like. Let's go in inside the initialization script. Over here, we will find a batch load control table. I have designed the batch load control very simplistic and we have a few columns namely the batch name which contains the unique uh, identifier of what the job is currently running next we have a column called batch status it keeps an execution status and the execution status can be success failure and started and the batch start date the date when the uh, extraction of the data is getting started and the batch end date till the date the extraction has been done from the source and followed by a load date which keeps a track of the uh, when the record was created at which date time the record was created in the batch load control table so as previously we are using a dollar sysdate global variable to capture the system date next we are using one more set of variable global variable called dollar cdc date over here we are using a sql transform what it does it takes the last execution date for this particular batch for which the batch status was success so on the first day it will try to look for select max of batch end date what was the last execution date select the max date from the batch root control table where the batch name is the global variable batch name that is the product dimension and the batch status is success so on the very first day it will not be able it will return null so we are going to replace the null with the initial extraction data 1900 Next, we need to mark an entry in the batch load control table. So, the batch load control table, we will entry make an entry like a product dimension, batch status has started, the start date as the CDC extraction start date, that is 1900-0101. For the batch end date, it will be getting updated later based on the execution status of the current job, whether it's a success or a failure, depending on which the batch end date will be populated accordingly. And finally, a system date to pop, uh, identify the load date of this particular tuple. Next, let's go back to our job. Next, we have the data flow in place. Let's go inside the data flow. Over here, we have a source product table that is the OLTP master table for product. In this table, we have a field called last updated date. This column actually helps us to identify whether a new record was inserted in the master table or our existing record was modified. So based on the last previous extraction date, we will capture the change data from the source. For that reason, what we have done in the where clause in the query transform, we have put the condition as where product dot last updated date is greater than or equal to the dollar CDC date global variable. Over here, we have captured the last extraction date done so far for this product table. Next, we have let's check in the mapping so we have populated the product key that is a to be surrogate key of the dimension table with null next we have the source product id we have renamed this column so that we are using a table comparison transform going forward so based on column name we are going to do a comparison so we just rename the column as source product id followed by the usual columns the name of the product and the price Next, we are using a table comparison transform. This is a built-in uh, transformation available in data services, which helps to identify whether a record has been updated or whether a record exists in the target or does not exist in the target. And also, it generates based on the if the record is existing in the target, it will generate an operation code for that particular record coming from the source as um, update and if a record is doesn't exist in the target it comes new from the source then it will uh, uh, make the operation code of that particular record as insert 
So over here, let's look into the table comparison transform. We are using the table name as the target SCD type 1 table, that is our product dimension table. The generated key column will be the product key. Next, we are doing a comparison based on the source product ID, that is the natural key of the source. And we are going to uh, do a comparison based on the name and price. If any of these attributes gets changed, we need to update the existing dimensional record. And finally, we have the key generation transform. So for, for uh, the new records coming in, we need to generate the uh, surrogate key for the same. And for that, we have mentioned the target table name as the product dimension and the generated key column as the product key, that is our surrogate key. And the incremental value is 1. Finally, we placed our target table and in the target table, we have used the options of overflow file. If there is a database writing error, any rejection happening, we would like the data services to write the rejected record in the form of the SQL that were fired in a reject file. In our case, it's namely product dimension underscore reject dot txt. Next, if there is any other execution errors happens within the job, or the database error, we have the catch block to handle all these exceptions. And within the exception, what we are going to handle is we want to update the batch load control table to a status of failure. So in case of any exception, we would update the batch load control table, set the batch status to failed, which was earlier started. So set the batch status to failed and batch ended the same as the batch started because the batch was not successful and where the batch name is the uh, dollar batch name that is the product dimension and the batch status was started and ultimately we are using a raise exception function because I don't want my data job to display as completed whereas the data flow or there was any exception that was handled so I want the job to show as terminated so in this case we are using a raise exception transform now if everything goes fine our data flow runs smoothly and finally we will use a final script so at the end if the run was successful i want to update my batch and batch load control tables to keep a track of what was the last extraction date till which date the data was extracted so in this case update batch control set the batch status as success batch end date as the system date till the date the data was extracted and batch name is obviously the current uh, running batch that is the product dimension which was having a batch status has started during initialization. So going forward, this is how the batch load control table, the data in a batch load control table actually looks like. Next, what I have done over here is that in case there is any rejection, I want my batch control status table to display as failed. So if the logs, the reject file size is greater than zero, I would still like to mark that batch control uh, table as failure. In case maybe a, or a manual effort, we will later update those rejected records accordingly in our target table and then we can mark this product dimension status as success accordingly. That depends on the ETL framework how we have designed to handle errors and we will discuss that later stage during ETL best practices framework design and development. This much for the day. Hope you liked our tutorial. For any more uh, questions, visit dwbiconcepts.com. Thank you.